Well, good evening. It's October the 24th, and on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, we're doing a running study here at First Baptist Church Sellersburg called Navigating the New Testament. I'm Brother Steve. I'm the pastor. And last Wednesday night, if you haven't seen the video, you can watch the video. We did an introduction of the book of 2 Corinthians. On Wednesday nights, we're doing the outline, introductory remarks. On Sunday nights, I'm preaching a message from that book. And we'd certainly invite you to join us in person if you're part of the Metro Sellersburg community. And if you're not, we certainly appreciate you watching the videos. And if you're looking for a local church near you, we'd love to help you find a Bible-believing church near you. So feel free to reach out to me at our email address there at our website. If we can help in any way, we will. So tonight we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, a very familiar passage of Scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we'll look at verses 17 through 21 together. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now this is a very familiar passage of scripture. And in many ways, sometimes when we get a familiar passage of scripture, we kind of lose the significance of it because we've heard it so many times. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And we talk about that a lot. And so tonight I want to just look at this passage and share a couple simple points with you. Uh, First off, I want to remind you that if you are not a born again believer, these principles don't apply to you. You're not new in Christ. You're not a new creature. But as a new creature in Christ, as a born again believer tonight, you have been given a new priority. Uh, Notice first off with me that Jesus and knowing God through Jesus must become your new priority. Before you meet Christ, your priority is generally serving yourself. It is uh, looking out for number one. It's taking care of those things that help you. But in Christ as a new creature, we begin to ask, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus have me do? How would Jesus have me meet this situation? How can I best represent Christ in this situation? I have a new priority. I'm a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Not just some things. Not just the things you don't like about yourself, but all things become new. We, we stop serving sin. You see, before you're born again, you're a servant of sin and of self and of Satan. But once you belong to Jesus, that new creature takes over and Christ in you comes out and you stop serving self. And you stop serving sin. If you're not a Christian, you probably are just very much self-centered, probably very much wrapped up in yourself. Uh, There is a contradiction. It's an oxymoronic statement to be a uh, self-serving, self-centered Christian. That's, That's not possible. In Christ, you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are of God, and all things are made new. We get to the place where we stop serving self and stop serving sin, and we start serving the Savior. So in Christ, we get a new priority, but notice also a new personality. Old things are passed away. All things become new. What about your personality? Is it new in Christ? Have all things gone? The things that used to dishonor God, they need to go away. The things that get in the way of you being fruitful and and blessing others, they need to come and be a part of who you are. And you get a heart for the kingdom of God. We have a responsibility as we take on this new personality. All things become new because Christ has changed us. We are new creatures. The old is gone. The new priority The new personality must come in. But also I want you to see there's a new power. Look at verse 18. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. I want you to understand that God has given us this responsibility. Notice again, verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So at verse 18, we're given the ministry of reconciliation. And in verse 19, we're given the word of reconciliation. And that word is that Jesus saves. That ministry is to help people come to Jesus. We have a new power. This power is a reminder for us that we get to share the gospel with people. We get to bless other people. We get to help them see their need for a Savior, their need to come to Christ. We have a new responsibility. 
Notice that power is reconciliation, to share the gospel, to preach the gospel, to help people be reconciled to God. And what a great power that is. What a great blessing it is that when we come to Christ, we get to do the work of evangelism. A lot of times people say, oh, I don't want to do evangelism. It's not, it's not optional. We have this ministry of reconciliation, not just helping people get along, but helping people come to God. And the only way you can be reconciled to God is through repentance, through soul winning, through a personal walk. And as believers, we get to share that word of reconciliation. You must be born again. We get to witness. We get to evangelize. We get to go out on visitation, uh, grow ministry, whatever we call it, soul winning. We have that responsibility of helping others come to Christ. Notice it's a great responsibility, that, that power of reconciliation. But not only do we have a power of reconciliation and we get to share the gospel, but we have the power of representation. Look again at verse 20 with me, if you would. Verse 20 tells us this. Now we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So not only do we have the ability, the word, the ministry of reconciliation, but we have the power of representation. We get to stand in for Christ and tell others, this is what Jesus has done for you. Look again, I'm his ambassador. Wow, what a blessing. I get to be the ambassador. I get to be the one who in his stead represents him in a foreign land. And that's exactly what we're called to do. My citizenship's in heaven. I'm representing Jesus down here till he calls me home. I read a story one time, uh, I think it was in a Dr. Criswell sermon or something, about an American statesman named John R. Mott. He was a wonderful Christian leader. He'd been a missionary to Japan for many years. And President Calvin Coolidge reached out to him to see if he would be the United States ambassador to Japan. He was a godly man, a wonderful business person, a great guy, a Christian statesman. Mr. Mott responded, Mr. President, God has called me to be an ambassador from the courts of heaven. And since that call, I have been deaf to all other invitations. You see, he understood the power of representation, that he was serving Christ, and that to stay focused on an ambassador of Christ, he couldn't belittle himself by being an ambassador of the United States or even a fine president. He understood that God's calling on his life was to represent others. My first priority and my great vision and my goal in life is to be a worthy witness an ambassador, an emissary from the courts of God, telling men, representing to men the grace of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, with these powers come great responsibilities and privileges, don't they? See, I'm privileged to be an ambassador. God has entrusted me with his care. But the responsibility is to be faithful. The responsibility is to practice reconciliation. The responsibility is to tell others of his needs and of his love for them. Folks, I want you to understand that if you find somebody who's lost, you're an ambassador. You're supposed to help them find Jesus. If you stumble upon somebody who's weary, you're supposed to help them find Christ. You stumble upon a Christian who's backslidden and away from the things of God. You're to draw them back. You're to help them see Jesus. We have the power of reconciliation, but we also have the power of representation. Now, let me remind you that you have a new priority and a new personality and a new promise or a new power, but there's also a new promise. Look at verse 21 with me, if you would. Verse 21, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Notice this great promise, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What an incredible privilege. Not only do I get to be his ambassador, not only do I get to be part of reconciling others to Christ, not only do I get a new personality and, and a new priority, but what a promise that in Christ, not only do I get to be born again, but I get to be made part of his righteousness. You see, when I ask, what would Jesus do? I'm, I'm trying to practice righteousness because Christ lives in me. That we might be a part of, that we're the righteousness of God in him. You see, that's a promise. There's going to come a day when my body's going to die. It's inevitable. Everybody dies. 100% of the people. One out of one people die. And when I die and stand before the Lord someday, you know what they're going to see in me? Not the filthy, rotten, dirty sinner that I am. 
that they're going to see the righteousness of God in Christ been applied to my heart and to my account. I'm redeemed. I became a new creature. I'm a born-again believer. The righteousness of God is in my life. Friend, I got good news for you. We first become a new creature. And in that, we experience a new priority, a new personality, a new power, and a new promise. You must be born again. See, in Christ, you're a new creature. Without Christ, you're a dead man walking. Without Christ, you have no hope. Let me challenge you tonight to be certain that you're a new creature. You have to admit that you're a sinner. You have to believe that Jesus died for your sins. You have to confess that your sin cost Jesus to go to the cross. And in accepting his gift at the cross, you confess your sins to him. You claim repentance and you receive forgiveness. Maybe you need to pray a prayer similar to this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know that you died for me. I repent of my sins and accept your gift. Thank you for saving me. If you pray to prayer like that, the Bible says you're in Christ. You become a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Why not take a minute and go to our website, fbc-sellersburg.org. There's a link to the gospel at the top of our webpage. And I would so encourage you to just read that carefully. A couple pages, not very long. The Billy Graham people put it together and gave us permission to use it. And we're just happy to share with you the truth of the gospel, that you can be a new creature. You can be born again and receive a new priority, a new personality, a new power, and a new promise. And they're available for you if you'll call on the name of the Lord. Father, I'm praying tonight that you would Speak to each one watching. That you'd help us, Lord, to listen carefully. Lord, if there's one who's uncertain of their relationship with you, I pray that they would experience newness of life in you and become a new creature. Help them to see their need for a redeemer. A lot of Christians are watching and they're not practicing the ministry of reconciliation. I pray that we would all be found faithful in telling others about Jesus. May we be found diligent when you come. We trust you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you.